Jessica's mind, I think, is on NASCAR today, isn't it, Jessica? She's getting ready to feed about 3,000 people in about a total of, what, six hours? Yep. All right, the next recipe, we could get rid of all the savory items. I'm gonna just pull from over here. It's raspberries, strawberries, We've got a thing called mascarpone cheese. My recipe calls for a tiramisu mascarpone. Um, I'm going with the plain mascarpone. Has anyone ever had mascarpone? It's a fresh cheese, very similar to cream cheese, a little sweeter. When I'm making a cream sauce for pastas, if I'm making a fettuccine, uh, Alfredo, or just with Primavera, after you get your cream sauce done, this is great to just put like a tablespoon into your pan, swirl it around with the pasta. It makes it really rich, kind of sweetens it up a little. Uh, not sugary sweet, kind of creamy sweet, really good. We've got pine nuts. We've got fresh mint. Ah, a little vanilla. And that's the one that's gonna take it on this, on this one here today. Pine nuts, um, pretty healthy for you. Um, if you're not allergic to nuts, uh, go for it. We chose today the raspberries. These raspberries are beautiful. They're uh, California grown. They're not local. We will be getting local stuff coming soon. Um, you could use blackberries. You can use blueberries. You can use a combination of all of them. I mean, if you just wanted to put all kinds of fruits in here, you can. If you don't want the berry thing going and you wanted to put some uh, fine diced apples, kind of like how I cut those uh, cucumbers earlier, you know, real thin, could put apples and add a different texture to it. Again, when you're in the kitchen, it's your kitchen. Do what you want to do and cook the way you want to cook and cook accordingly for the people that you're feeding. So we're going to slice up these strawberries a little bit. <laughs> Throwing things around. One thing I do have trouble with the gloves making my cuts. I end up getting, cutting through the glove a little. Now the raspberries, we're not gonna slice at all because they're texture and they're smaller. They're gonna kind of press into this um, and, fill, and fill this wrap up really nice and kind of You'll see when, it, when they get smushed in there, they're going to end up uh, holding on to the strawberries. And then forget about him. On this one, we're gonna go ahead and put our berries in. Now these were rinsed. Um, those have not been rinsed, but I rinsed those off. Had them on a towel drying earlier today. Gonna tear some mint up into this one. If you take the mint and the dill, I did that with the dill when I picked it earlier. If you kind of just press it, break it open a little bit, what you're getting, you're getting the oils coming out of there, and it's pulling more flavor out of the mint leaves. Um, very aromatic. I'm gonna put our pine nuts in there. We've got some vanilla, one teaspoon of vanilla going in. I'm going to go a little more of it tonight. Am I missing anything? The cheese. How do we want to do the cheese? Do we want to smear it on there or do we want to make a mix? Smear it on, okay. So I've got everything this time? It's just that dill that got me last time. These are great for breakfast, too. I mean, you know, you can serve them any time of the day. Now 
go by torn end. You know what you do with that? Turn it towards you, and that's the side that gets rolled up first, and no one ever knows the difference. So the mascarpone is similar to a cream cheese. As you can tell, it smooths a little easier. And it's not pasteurized, it's a fresh cheese. All right, now we're gonna mix this up. And then when I'm mixing it, I am gonna kinda take it and I'll feel through and get some of those, uh, not all of them, but I'll get some of the raspberries broken up into it. Kinda bring it all together. These we're going to try pinwheels on. Whoa! It's like the fish that got away the other day. Okay, what else could I be putting in here? I could go for sugar, but I'm trying to go low sugar cooking. I'm trying to keep somewhat healthy. I could put oranges in, I could put blueberries in. Instead of pine nuts, I could be putting pecans. Kiwi, did I, who said kiwi? Kiwi's a good one. I could put sliced bananas in there. Okay, so we talked about the bad end. Well, this one is always good to make sure I don't forget anything off the bat because my hands, if I have to unroll it, I'm going to get the outside of this uh, tortilla wrap all scarred with redness. So. Glad I got everything in that first time. Again, we're gonna kind of press it down. Now we're gonna start our pinwheels. There we go. Who watches cooking shows? Really? That's it? I thought with all these folks coming out here today, you're all be cooking cooking show gurus. <laughs> Who's your favorite on TV? Who, Paula? I got to share the stage with Paula Dean a few years ago. I didn't do much, I did her recipe while she had the crowd like wrapped in her hand the whole time. And then I got to back up another guy that was on Never Watch Top Chef. He was at our food show in Knoxville. I got to back him up. His name was Hector Santiago. And I asked him, I said, I'm sorry, Hector. I, you know, I never met him, we talked over the phone. We went through his recipe, and he was our guest chef out there. And uh, when I met him, I said, sorry, I really don't remember you. Sorry, but, you know, I don't get to watch a lot of TV. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. I was the first one voted off. I was like, well, then how, how are you doing this? He says, I think I'm getting pity votes or something. He says, my restaurant in Atlanta has, like, tripled in business. He says, I, I have waiting lists now for three months. He said, ever since I lost on the show, I'm a popular guy. He says I'm touring and everything. So I thought that was kind of funny. I thought, you know, maybe he went to, you know, the finals or something. And this is the same routine as last time.
Something else you could do with these, and I'll show you here in a second. I'm not set up for it. But, if you had a saute pan, and I don't have my cooking stove on, and you took these and you just put a toothpick through the bottom without the frill, you kind of inserted the toothpick in this way, again, no frill, and this way, it's going to hold the wrap together from the bottom. Then you take a little honey, and you coat it in honey, and rub a little brown sugar on it, put it in a saute pan with some butter on there, you flip it over, and you brown it on one side, and then as it's browning, you pull the picks out, and you roll it, and then it's gonna sear it on the other side. Man, they're really good. You take them out, you put powdered sugar on them, really good, and you got that fresh cheese in there. Now, come back next week and I'll do that. What are we doing next week, Jessica? Look how nice those are in there. Nice bite size. Oh, my racing favorites. Every year we do uh, a little thing with uh, a TV station down in Johnson City, and for the race we call it grilling the way it ought to be. Kind of like the old Bristol racing the way it ought to be. I've been doing them now for four years, it's basically eight races. So this year the theme is Larry's favorites because I'm out of stuff to do. Um, but next week I'm gonna pull some of my favorites out of there. Is there anything y'all wanna see getting cooked? Any cooking, I'm gonna grill up here, that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> gonna have something to do with uh, a whole chicken, meatloaf, grilled. Anyone ever grill meatloaf? Turns out pretty good. What else should we do, Jessica? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because you're always setting up the race. So you can you, yeah, you can. Yeah, that would be real. That's a great idea. Chocolate sauce. That's, <laughs> and honestly, that's the mascarpone. Um, tiramisu mascarpone is, yeah, I'll have tiramisu dessert, kind of like the mocha flavor. It always has the mascarpone in there as part of the dessert. We sold out of it here at the store. So I got here. Jessica's like, we don't have mascarpone. Or, or the tiramisu mascarpone. I said, well, we'll do without. But man, that's really good in here. That's, that's I think, on the recipe. Is that what it says? It, oh, you're fine. You can. Um, I'd say about 90% of our stores will carry it. Each store has a basic uh, format and selection that they need to follow, but that will change from store to store based on proximity and you know who they're selling to. And they'll try stuff, and if it doesn't sell, they pull it. But I think about 90% of our stores are selling the tiramisu mascarpone right now. It's been very popular for us and uh, nice to, nice to work with. So here's your raspberry, strawberry roll-ups.